have a God encounter. That's what we came here for. You know, we have to fight through those things called traditions of men that come in here and just like we go through the routine. You got to fight to keep this heart burning for an, a move of God and an expectation. It's one thing to cry out for something. It's another thing to let God actually change you. We've all been moved and had encounters in church that we really thought that that was the one, the, the time that we were, man, things are going to be different now. But what happens? Life gets busy. I just want us to, to come in here to grab a hold of something. That'd be the mindset. I'm, I'm, Lord, I do. I desire to change. It doesn't mean you're backslidden and you're lost. It means we want to grow in love. Amen. I love, you know, 15 years ago, 16 years ago, 16, I think, 16 years ago, I got married. It was awesome. But it doesn't just stop there. It, it, it's continued to grow and gotten, it's gotten better and better and better and better and better. Same thing with our love walk with Jesus. It's not to come become stagnant and stale and to be able to just say, yeah, I'm a Christian. That's not how we like to be loved, and that's not how our God has designed us. It's not how he lays it out in his word that he wants to be loved. You are put here for one purpose, and it's got to be as simple as this. What is your calling and your purpose? It's to love God with everything you got, all your gifts and talents. When we come in here, the, 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 the one thing that you have to fight for is over-familiarity with these kind of services. I love meeting with the brethren. You get... Such great breakthroughs when you have people, brothers and sisters, coming together with one heart. We're here for Jesus, amen? Things happen. And that at the power of agreement, when, when God's people come together, Jesus, I'm yours. I want you, Jesus, to be first, and I want you to be great in my life, amen? So that's the theme of, of, of this service is that the Lord Jesus will be first and he'll be great in your life. We don't want to be a slave to selfishness. You know, we choose very difficult paths. It's called my way. Me, me, me. I want this. Jesus has an excellent way for us, but you have to fight to stay on that road. Amen? going to take some time. The Lord desires his house to be a house of prayer. Amen. This should be the freest place to talk to Jesus. And we're just going to pray. We're going to wait on the Lord. We're here to have an encounter with the Lord. When you encounter that presence, when he, when he thaws out a piece in your heart that's gotten hard over the time, you didn't realize it. That's what we're here for his spirit to come and, and just blow upon our heart. The Bible verses I'm going to use today, if you've been serving Jesus any length of time, you're going to know them all. But it, what we want the Lord, the Lord to do is breathe on these verses. And something changes. It goes from just this head knowledge to this burn inside. This is my purpose. This is what I'm here for. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, what an honor and a privilege it is to be here with my brothers and sisters. We love you, Jesus. I never want to take this gathering with my brothers and sisters for granted, Lord. But we're here to accomplish your will and purpose. We're asking, Lord, that your kingdom come and your will be done inside our hearts that would be transformed by the renewing of our mind through your word. And Lord, that we'd walk in this place in assignment in unity, Lord Jesus. To be able to partner with you, Jesus. Lord, I desire to dream your dream for my life. Asking for freedom in this place. 
Lord, I'm asking you to touch our eyes that we would see what you see over our life. Not all the negative, not all the, you're not this, you're not that, not all of our failures, but Lord, what do you, what, what do you see over our life, Lord? We love you, Jesus. We give you honor. I just ask for your freedom. Who the sun sets free is free. If there's anyone that struggles with expressing that love, because they're in a, in a cage. Just a low view of you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you deliver us today. You're worthy of it all. If you just stand with me, I'm just going to give honor where honor's due. talks about entering his courts with thanksgiving just take a moment just allow your heart just when you think of thankful heart just be we might be faces it might be things that god's met with you but we want to make sure there's one thing that breaks us out of selfishness it's just be given all give honor to the lord and all of our little situations that seem so important when you begin to just magnify the lord in your heart those things just become not that big of a deal amen thankful for your health your, his incredible leadership over your life. Every person, just begin to thank the Lord. Just begin to thank Him for your children. So many times He showed mercy over our life. Lord, you've been so good to us. Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us another one, Lord. Lord, I pray that we will make the most of it, Lord Jesus. I'm so thankful for your provision. I'm so thankful for your leadership, your kindness, your love. You're such a good shepherd. You're amazing. Your word says you'll never leave us or forsake us. I thank you for never leaving me, Jesus. times I, have, I wasn't crying out to you. You never left me. You comforted me when I was completely unaware of you. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for establishing everybody's feet in this place, Lord, that you chose us. here today. God led your steps. Amen. Like the 
permission to come close, come close to me. I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to come close, come close to me like a father. I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to come close, come close to me. I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to come close, come close like a father. I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to come close, come close to me. Just come close, come close to me. Just come close, come close to me. 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 Come close to me. Come close, 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 come close to me. touch our heart, go deep. The things that we keep away from everybody else, we just invite your spirit to come and touch that tender spot because it hurts and we're in need of you, Jesus.
just want to give you an opportunity uh, to give. We're going to take up this morning's offering. I see, I see a lot of people already put it up in there. <clears throat> but Lord Jesus, we do. We just thank you for the incredible provision that you have given to each person in this place, God. We count it all joy to be able to give back. But Lord, I pray that it be more than just a gift of you know, finances, but Lord, that we'll give you our time, our energy, and our talents, Lord Jesus. That it goes further, the transfer will be further, Lord Jesus. That you would awaken love in this place to be so expressive. The things that have been choked out through selfishness, God, I pray you just awaken that. You set it free today, Jesus. We love you. We're thankful for you. We're going to release our children to go have an encounter with Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for the incredible inheritance you have given us. Lord, I pray for wisdom to train them up in your ways. We just decree over our children and our youth that they're going to be a set-apart generation. Like Daniel, like Daniel was, ten times set apart. That they'll love you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength all the days of their life. I pray for the parents in this place, Lord. Grant us a heart of wisdom to raise up burning hearts in this generation. Hallelujah. Good morning. I tell you, the presence of the Lord just does something to you. I said this last week, and I just want to keep saying it again. Like, you know, we, we're good at overcomplicating things. Jesus laid it out there pretty straight and narrow for us. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Why you're here. Why do you have breath in your lungs? And why do you have the gift and the talents that God has given you? You know, one thing I love about worship, about the only time you can get people to sing together is like at a birthday party. You know, I don't just lay off in it and just sing songs randomly with folks. It's just an honor to be able to worship with brothers and sisters takes us completely outside our comfort zone. I mean, let alone, we just ask people to come pray on the mic and it's like stage fright for every, like a lot of folks. Let alone sing, but we're all up in here singing. You know, we don't do that for anybody else. Jesus is worthy of it. I love that. That's like, man, he's worthy. Hallelujah. Matthew 22, uh, 37 through 39. Jesus said to them, you should love me with all your heart, soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it, you should love your neighbor as yourself. This is the heart and theme of this, this fellowship, but I think it's, it's the heart and theme of God. You stay right here, you'll love well. You're gonna struggle to do this one word that's up in the midst of this with all. That's the challenge for every person in this place. With some, if it would say some, we could do some. But all is where everybody loves in the uh, areas in their life that are easy to love. It just comes natural to love this particular way. But Jesus says, I don't want you to just do it that way. The world can do those kind of types. I want you to love love. The love that keeps no record of wrong. Oof, I have a pretty good list here. I'm just gonna save this for a rainy day just in case says, hey, if you keep that list, I'll keep my list. He takes better records. It's important that we, we, we love like Jesus. And I just want us to, you know, as we, we had a pretty awesome night, Friday night. It was just a special night. We're celebrating tabernacles. You know, the feast days to the Lord, they're just, they keep you on his heartbeat. Amen? They just like... 
hey, I want you to remember one day you're going to do this with me in Jerusalem. I want you to pay attention to that. That should stir us up a little bit. There should be a longing for the Lord's return. I think most men today in church long for retirement more than they do for the Lord's return. There should be a burn inside of us. Longing because you know what? The one you love the most, he's coming back for us sometime. And the Lord wants to raise up a generation that can throw off that what it is to be a man or what it is to be successful in life. The, word, the, the Lord's definition of su- success is completely opposite of the world. And we gotta be okay with that. But today there's these buzzwords. Well, that's not, you know, that, that's not the Jesus I know. It's like, I don't know what Jesus you know. We, we can't cu- um, cut and paste the word of God as it, as it pleases us. This is what's created such a danger in the church today. Uh, these statistics, you know, when sometimes they say numbers don't lie. You know, that 78%, 70, something like 75%, 78%, of our youth that grow up in church, that go to Sunday school, they, their parents were in church. Every service, not just randomly here and there, every service, when they graduate high school, 78% of them will never return to church. So you could look around in the youth here and the children in there, which ones are you okay keeping, which ones you're not? What that means, it doesn't mean we have a bad gospel, it means we have a broke way. Because we pick and choose the way we're gonna serve. We prioritize things in the world more than the priorities of the things of God. And this is what the Lord wants to stir up a little righteous anger for each parent in this place that you contend for the inheritance for your life and your children's life. That we show the true definition to our children what, what, what it is to be a godly man and a godly woman. And it's completely set apart from the world's standard. We're here to do the Lord's will. Amen? That's what it's all about. I mean, some of us might have like gave our hearts to the Lord so we didn't go to hell. It shouldn't stay that, that your motivation. I mean, definitely don't want to go to hell, but this is one of those, it should grow past that into this incredible love relationship that you've been loved by God. I mean, I just get excited. It's like, man, that's so amazing that we can pray to the living God on a daily basis. I know that gets kind of generic and old sometimes, but it's only because our hearts kind of gotten waxed over. It's like, no, full access pass to the creator of everything. And we have a hard time finding time for it. Does that look, I mean, there's, you just gotta pause and like, man, there's, there's an issue here. It's just a love issue. We fall on our face and c- confess it and like, Lord, mm. It's happened again. It's starting to gone cold a little bit. I'm okay confessing that because it keeps me my heart burning. We talked, you know, uh, I shared on uh, Matthew 25, I don't, 25, 22, somewhere there, about the, uh, the, about the parable of the talents. You've been given an opportunity this last year and we're just saying this last year because of uh, <clears throat> Yom Kippur, which is a, uh, a feast day for the Lord. It's kind of a time frame, trumpets feast, uh, and stuff. So anyways, we're just talking. We, did, we took a very hard evaluation for 10 days over our heart as a body. How did I invest this last year? Everybody here has been given talents and gifts. How did you invest? Did you double it? Did you bury it? Where are we at? The Bible talks about without vision, God's people cast off restraint. As soon as you walk out the door, this world is designed to steal your gaze. With every pop-up and shiny little thing that comes up on your phone, the next big news information to occupy. It's important to watch over what goes in your eyes, what goes in your, you can't get that stuff out. But did we double it? That's the heart check. That's what we wanted to do. We keep, you know, we want to make sure that we're taking a, 
Well, I didn't double it. I'm going to press on. All right, what's the game plan from here? Because what happens if we don't have a game plan, we'll reproduce the exact same thing last year. Matthew 9, 37 through 38. Then he said to his disciples, the har- his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into the harvest. We want, every Christian should want this to burn on their heart. It's an overplayed scripture. We've heard it a, mo- a bunch. Does it, still, does it still stick to you that like, Lord, thrust me forth as a laborer, one that can double what you give me this year. Amen? Not just, you know, double for your trouble. I'm not talking that stuff. I'm talking about lay down your life and die so God can be glorified. Amen? This is, this is what we want to do. This is the only time that, that it would actually be a sacrifice. Once you see the Lord, everybody's going to fall down on their knees. Everybody's going to lift their hands. Everybody's going to shout hallelujah. This is the only time that it actually is a sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice to lay down our life for somebody else. Can you push through? You know, I heard, you know, I heard it said like this, this world is perfectly designed to perfect love in your heart. You're, you're under enough pressure, there's enough distraction to just purify this heart with God's love. We always think we got, you know, sometimes we can just think we got a raw deal. Hey, nothing's new in the sun. Everybody's gotten something, shape, form, or fashion. But we don't understand this is a little mystery called God's grace. God's grace isn't a license to sin. It's just to thrust you forth in the power of God. That's what God's grace is. He's given you the grace to overcome it, to walk through it, that you weren't destroyed. Amen? But we want to truly, you know, to partner with this heart. Any good parent worth his salt, our children are dear to us. You know, you don't ever want to touch a mama's baby. You know, you'll wake up the she-bear. I mean, it just, you take a little woman and just become a ferocious, you know, when it comes to their children. They'll defend them to the death. And the nature does it. Natural women, you know, do it. It's just, uh, and the Lord constantly refers to us as his children, as a father. And this is one of those things, how, how, we can't have, he's not a terrifying, scary guy up in heaven. He's our heavenly father that is pulling for the most for his children. And he has some out there that are completely lost, blind, and naked, and nobody, nobody's paying attention to them. They're not, they're not caring about them. That we can come up in here feeling so good about us, but don't even care about other people. This is an issue in our heart that last year we were supposed to double this. Last year, this was supposed to take from just a Bible verse to actual faces and people that we went out and sought after. Random people that come to your mind that you once had a... Uh, relationship or with it. It's like, well, just random. No, no, those are people God is trying to get you to pray for. Those are people that God is like, hey, reach out to them. You never know where they're at. But because we don't keep our heart on the main thing, it just becomes a random thought. We'll make sure that we hear the voice of the Lord. Amen? Can you recognize when the Lord is the whisper? It's the flash image. It's the this person, that person. But, you know, sometimes it's not our, you know, oh, I just didn't know which one, it was, you know, who to invest in or this or that. Or sometimes there's another issue in the, in, in the heart. It's called laziness. We have one of the laziest generations. We want everything given to them. If the internet isn't just blistering fast, it's too slow. If our cell phones go die, it's a huge inconvenience. We gotta get, we gotta, Lord, I wanna be a laborer. That means something's gonna have to go in our life. That means something will have to be cut out because you can't do everything. Yeah, Jesus did everything just so contrary to a, he lived with his disciples. He hung out with them. There was a, a part that he made available that 
it's important to raise up a uh, generation. I told you, you know, when we plan children events, you know, do a couple a year, that's like an eternity to a child. We had an awesome one this, this week, a weekend. We did this hay ride. And I told Travis or B, I was like, hey, I just want to, I want to do the, I want to do this hay ride, but I want to do something special along the way. I'm just going to leave that up to you. I just feel like we want to do something special along the way. You know, just kind of like a few different stops and, you know, we have some kind of thing with it. Well, they put their creativity and talent into it. And we did this in like a week. You know what I'm saying? This is one of those things is we can do, you know, the more excellent way how to train and equip. It was an awesome hayride. If you didn't, if you missed out on it, you missed it because it was one of the most epic ones. It was hilarious and powerful. And it's so important that we make, we set up these moments. As parents, did you double your kids' spirituality this year? Well, that's not really up to me. It's up to the Holy Spirit. But if you did nothing, you were the porter of your home. You set the standards for your children. I make sure I set up divine encounters for my children with other people. I don't wait for other people. I'm not taking the chance. I'm just waiting on the Holy Spirit to move on you. I'm, I, don't, I don't gamble with my kids hoping that you catch the vision. If I have a vision, I'm going to make it known to somebody, hey, I'd like you to just encourage my children. I would like to encourage Annabelle, Lily. Oh, sure, that man would be my heart. Yeah, they totally buy it. This is everybody's heart. But we don't have a labor mindset. We do what we're asked, but we're just taking that second walk that Jesus talked about. It's the Sermon on the Mount lifestyle. I'm just not asking you to walk one mile with them. I'm asking you to do two. So with me, especially you parents with teenagers, you gotta, you gotta make sure you're going out of your way to set up divine encounters with your kids to not take the chance. Well, Nobody really reaches out to my ch you know, child. Get over it. It's your responsibility to set up encounters with, with people. I do it. It's important to do this. I want to utilize the body of Christ, the strength that's here. I realize my sphere of influence, I get to be the heavy and I get to be the love. But you know what? There's other people that come there and give, give, give encouragement that means so much to them. And it's important that every parent take a hold of the responsibility to double your, children, your kids' spiritual growth. Because when it's lost, it's lost. You know, I always look at like my uh, time to invest in my kids is like, I just take four quarters. I have about 20 years of really effective, I better do it right. Or I'm gonna, um, you know, the first five, it's like, holy moly, all of my kids are above five now. It's like, I got five, Lily just hit another one. So I'm like halfway done with my sphere of influence with Lily. There, I labor with a purpose, an urgency. It's important that we labor with an urgency. Like there are people that are gonna die that you, only you have the sphere of influence in their life. You're the only people around them that can see. Some people call them, they're just ridiculous. They're, their life is full of drama and they just curse them. But the Lord's saying, I want you to love them. Yeah, they're a little silly and foolish, but I want you to love them in the midst of that. They need to hear truth. And you gotta have, you gotta have this supernatural thing called a bridge, and it's, it's, it's a relationship with people that love can travel across. If you don't have relationship, it's just information. Hey, God bless you, I hope you have a good one. It's important to build relationships, but relationships take one of the most precious things called time. I just encourage you to make wise investments with your time. There's so many things you poured in this last year that you have your reward. All of us, we have our reward. It's over and it's got done. We put hours and hours into it and it's like, you have your reward. I'm not trying to be like a heavy. I hope this is, it's important that we catch the vision. It's important that you realize Every situation you went through, whether it was good or bad, that there was the grace of God to triumph in the midst of a storm. See, if you've been a Christian any long, you see most Christians collapse under storms. We praise them when everything's going great, but when it gets tough and you're having to really beat your body into submission to the word of God, to love people in their ridiculousness, in the place of the home, marriage, when it gets tough, to forgive, to be the first ones to, hey, I just want to confess, I was a bad response. 
Well, it's a good thing you are confessing because you're an idiot. Hey, I was. We're not here to throw stones, you know what I'm saying? But the ones that, you know, we want to be able to wear on a cloak of humility and serve one another. Amen? Christian marriages should be completely set apart from the world. But it takes work. It takes being real. It takes, hey, all right, we got issues. What is the biblical application? And it's just not submit. You know what I'm saying? There's a biblical application. It's called love. And we have to work this thing out. It's called forgiving. Anytime you want to feel like you got a good case against somebody, just remember God forgave you. And he had an incredible case against you. Like there should be a little righteous anger that fires up inside your heart to see God get the glory, even in bad situations. Terrible situation. But my God has given me strength that he, he can be, his name can be glorified in the midst of this. Amen? <clears throat> Nehemiah 1, 7. Nehemiah is serving uh, the king He's the king's cupbearer. And there's some people that come, some brothers that come from Jerusalem. And he wants to, you know, he gets a little insight, a little information from them. He's like, hey, how's it going? And he finds out that the walls have been torn down. The gates have been burned with fire and the city's in rubble. And he says... So it was when I heard these words, I fell down and wept and mourned for many days with fasting and prayer before the God of heaven. This dude's the king's cupbearer. He has a high priority job, but he's finding time to fast and pray and weep before the Lord. When's the last time you heard bad information that didn't consider a loved one, uh, that does not consider a loved one like passing away or something like that you actually fell down and wept and mourned that for the gospel's sake. Right now we're so overloaded with bad information it doesn't even affect us anymore. We become cold and hard and like, that idiot deserved that. You know, it's like, whew. I'm glad Jesus didn't have that heart when I, when I was an idiot. But his response is just Oh, my heart grieves for my brothers and sisters. Even though this guy realizes he will never see Jerusalem. He is a slave to the king. He isn't complaining to the Lord. Lord, if you deliver me from being a slave, I would, I would, I would straight be your guy. He's weeping and saying, Lord, can, can you do something here? So he ends up getting favor with the king. The Lord is, the king pours it out on him. You need wood? You can go. You've been so faithful in my court. You can go. What else you need? You're going to need some laborers? You're going to need this? He, and the king blesses him, sends him forth. But there's a condition. How long is it going to take you? Because I'm going to need you back. So this guy's about to go labor with all the skills and talents to give his, to labor a part of something that he, he doesn't even get to enjoy. But he knew the promises of God. He knew that was God's people and God's city. And he's like, man, it hurts me that it's torn down. And I can't help, but when I hear something like this, does it not give me a flashback and let some righteous anger be stirred up about the church of Acts? What a crazy love they had for one another. That we could begin to partner with God's dream for what it looked like. That at every joint supplying, that that they met each other's need. The church was added to daily. Like that, that fires me up. I'm like, I just wanna see Jesus be famous. I wanna see those that are hurting and lost like I was and that were so confused be set free, empowered and have a life that literally can, you, you can thrust them forth in the harvest where they get to set other people free. But this should be, it's, what is my heart? My what is, what's on the Lord's heart? 
The fact that we see things in the word that are not manifested in the church because nobody will have the vision or dream to cry out to it for it for breakthrough. What does the man do? He fasts and prays. He's crying out for breakthrough. Lord, we're in need here. So he goes and he spies out the land. He goes and checks it all out, how it's all going to go down. Oh, hold on a minute. Let's slow down. In Acts 2, uh, 43 through 47. I mean, this is this, just allow yourself to dream the dream with the Lord. That the fear of the Lord would come back to the church. That we wouldn't defile our eyes. We wouldn't make promises that we don't ever follow up on. That everything that we did, that we would delight in doing for the Lord, no matter who, who sees it or not. That we could see many wonders begin to happen in the church. having all things in common. Why? Because their common goal is the same as Jesus. To see his kingdom advance. No agenda. I mean, the, the, the continuing daily in one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. These are, these are things that you, like, Lord, do you really desire that? As a parent, what do you desire with your children? Fellowship or strife? I love it when I watch my kids and they're just playing and it's all happening. You know, arguing, they're helping each other, work through their problems. It does my heart joy, joy just so good. Much the more the king of glory, Amen. So Nehemiah went out and he checked out the, the scene. He went out by night. Nobody knew what he was doing just yet. He went out and he looked at it. He's like, wow, this thing is rough. I encourage you to read this. And number one, when Nehemiah's pray, his prayer to the Lord, let that connect to your prayers. Oh, Jesus, I want to, like, this mug had a depth and relationship with God as he's petitioning the Lord. And he, can, he goes in uh, Nehemiah 2:17 through uh, through 18. This is this isn't something that just happened overnight either. This thing's been this for years and years and years. Been this way, city torn down. And what happens? Everybody is like, oh, man, this work just seems impossible. So everybody get, became okay that lived in the city of living in a ruined city. So now the church gathers every Sunday, okay, living, go home, hear the gospel, leave. Our lives are still a little chaotic. We have strife in our homes. There's no wonders, signs, wonders. People not adding to the church daily because, man, I want to be like you guys. I'm not trying to slam the church. I'm just trying to show you that there's a, there's a great need here. And because we get comfortable, just like these guys did, they are living in a ruined city and the work was not impossible. When they had a mind to work, they pulled it off in 52 days. They lived for years and years and years and years in a ruined city. But when what happened, God's people, they got together and it says they all had a mind to work. This is what you gotta see. Let's get a mind to work this year that we can see a move of God happen in our community that we no longer be imprisoned to whatever whatever bad situation happens, whether we're going to have a vibrant year or, or, you know, a blessed year or not a blessed year. It's like, dude, we're, we're, we're sons and daughters of God. We're here to thrive. Not because it's easy, because God goes before us. Amen? That we, you know, in his, his speech here is so good. He's like, I don't want you, so we no longer be a reproach. That we, you know, that the church would no longer be a reproach. 
that the world won't be able to say, well, you guys say this, but you live this way. And you, but you're right. Many of us do. But there's, you know what? God's raising up a remnant that literally will hasten the return of the Lord. It's this bride that's gonna make herself ready that says, hey, there's a more excellent way. That's gonna break off the traditions of men and grab a hold of the heartbeat of God and walk in power. We want our children to believe in the power of prayer. Instant should be our, their response. Because you know what? They've heard mom and dad pray time and time and time again. I see you're struggling, baby. Here, let's pray. This should be the go-to for every parent in this place. To not settle with living in strife. That's one of the biggest mockers to the kingdom of God. When you have the most powerful God that's done everything and equipped you for everything, but yet you will still live as a prisoner when he said you can live free. We should, we, we got, this is our hour to rise up and say, you know, I'm doubling this. I'm not going to live in strife. There's too much in the word for us to stand on. But if you have no game plan, you have no vision, let me tell you, the, ten, the one that, 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 that jacked with you all last year, he'll be the same one to come mess with you again. And God's people perish for lack of knowledge. Because why? Because they despise it. Because you know why? It takes work. And our little lazy soul just doesn't want to do. It wants to do what it wants to do. It just keeps on going. She'll get over it. And it's like, no, no, no. That's not how it's supposed to be. We got to make sure that we're going out of our way to love. We don't want, our, we don't want it to be a reproach to the Lord. And everybody, it's like we got into this, so it's just per, so personal that it doesn't affect you. Know, this is, it's, that's between me and Jesus. Me and Jesus, you can't go there. It's like, no, no, no. We brothers and sisters here, let's get real. It says a little leaven, leaven's the whole lump. And you lumped up in here with me, and you got that, that funk up in there. When children can call you out on your stuff, it's not good. What, you, what became normal to you is not normal in Jesus. I just encourage you to read over this Nehemiah passage and allow it to awaken something inside of your heart. Say, Lord, I want that heart. I don't want to be able to be okay living in a prayerless life. I'm not I'm okay just living where, you know what? The enemy can have full access to me anytime he desires to come invade. You know, that's where, hey, they lived in a ruined city. As long as nobody attacked, they're okay. But when the enemy attacked, there was nothing to hold them back from taking everything that they had. It's like people get their little peace flame up and it's like, the enemy comes by, like, oh yeah, that thing's burning. It's like, oh, you won't believe what happened. It's like, really? We're complaining about this? We're actually having this conversation. You need to have this conversation with Jesus. And there's gotta be a fight that you recognize the enemy is just not gonna, you gotta build some walls this year, amen? And we're not talking it don't take a whole year to build a wall. They did this in 52 days. Why? Because they had a mind to work. If you really want to overcome your enemies, get yoked up with a brother. Say, hey, I want you to hold me accountable here. Let's do some things that the word says. Let's hold each other accountable. I want you to pray with me on this and keep me accountable. That This is who I want to be, but this is what I normally do. Amen? I'm contending for some breakthroughs up in this house. <clears throat> And they did it in such a way that their enemies, when they came, that had to come spied out, they're like, holy moly. There's no way men could have done this. Their God had to do it. That we should labor in such a way and our lives should reflect such a, a glory of the Lord that there's no way that Josh Harrington or Chan or Donna could possibly do this. No one's like that. It's, that, it's the God they serve. That's the one I want to get the glory, amen? You know that is how to make old Nehemiah just proud. The Lord wants us contending for our inheritance no matter what it looks like. You have an inheritance to walk in peace and power. Not to get stuck in self-pity. to walk in a heart overflowing with love, that yeah, there's more than enough 
If you miss your prayer time in the morning and you missed it, hey, two mornings, that whoever comes across your path, your life is overflowing and you have what, it, what, the, what, it, what that person needs. Because it's not about, our, our, did I get you know, this scheduled time? Get it all the time. One of the favorite, my, my, what, what's just burning on my heart right now, Matthew 5, where it talks about the pure at heart, they'll see God. I want to see him in everything that I do. You know, when I first read the passage, in my early years, it's like, dude, I want to see God. I want to see like that throne room, like animal, you know, crazy creatures. Like that's what I'm envisioning when I'm reading that passage. But now it's like, no, I want to see you in everything, Lord. I want to see your hand over this person's life. I want to see your hand over my life. I want to see it in every, every situation that I've, I'm there for, whether it's a good one or a bad one. And I realize some of you are in bad situations right now. But let me tell you, God set you apart to thrive in the midst of it if, you, if you'll do it on his strength and his word. And you gotta see it for the glory of the kingdom. Can he be the God that overturns strife in a home? Is he that God? Or does he just do it every once in a while? But for your situation, this woman you gave me, you know, we're gonna do the whole Adam thing. Let's learn from other people's mistakes. I, I, I don't like, you know, you know what do they say? Experience is the best teacher. No, no, no. Learning from other people's bad experiences is my best teacher. You know, I don't, uh, if there's a more excellent way and I don't have to go through the headache that you went through, just give me what you got. Okay, I want to take that one and learn from it. I don't want to have to learn from knocking my head against the wall and realize there's a door right over here. Contending for the inheritance for the Lord. I love that you deserve the best of me. Does that not like burn inside your spirit when you hear that? It's like, he sure does. You, got, you know, sometimes you just got to put yourself in the corner. Like, dude, you better pull it together on this one. He deserves the best of you. So whatever you got to do to suck up, to go back out there and honor the king, you swallow the pride, you become a fool for Christ, and you humble yourself. This is, this is the gospel. We have to do this regularly. I mean, surely everybody else, you know, everybody in this room, sometimes you have to take the foot out of the, out of the mouth. It's like, eee. All right. I'm sorry about that. I overreacted. Oh, man, it gets me when I do it with the kids. I overreact, and it's like, I totally read the situation wrong. It's like, mm. All right. So, Annabelle, you were actually helping Justin. You know, it's like, oh, I done got onto her. It's important to make sure that we can humble ourselves. How quick can we repent? How quick can we say, hey man, I'm sorry, I blew it. I think it's important because this is kind of a freaky state, like passage. In the millennial kingdom, Satan will be released again after, during the thousand year reign of the Lord. And there'll be many deceived. You know, there's a, in Zechariah, it talks about uh, that they, they go up to celebrate tabernacles. It says, hey, if you don't go up, no rain. Now, you gotta think, this doesn't happen. This is during the millennial kingdom uh, uh, of, the, of the Lord. So we're gonna be celebrating this, this feast called tabernacles. What do you gotta do? You gotta stop what you're doing and go and get, get, get with God. The first generation, no problem. The first 50, the first 100 years, 200 years, man, everybody's doing this with great joy. Later down the road, where it becomes inconvenient, you got your life, man, everything's going good right now. I'm gonna, hey, I'm just gonna do celebrate tabernacles in my heart. I'm just gonna, you know, do it. Lord knows my heart. Yeah, he says, no rain. It's so important that you put effort into the advancement of the kingdom. When the Lord sets up little things, they're not good ideas. They're commandments. We don't, we don't love Jesus because it's just a good idea to do it. We love him because you know what? He's the God of creation and he commands us to love him. He grants us great opportunity to do this through the blood of Jesus. Amen? 
But uh, you know, that's how it has to go. They just get over familiar. They get busy. Well, I just, you know, I, I'm just going to do it in my heart and my mind. I encourage you to search the Lord. Don't do this in, you know, he, I got the Lord in my heart. I love Jesus in my heart. It's like, hold up. Well, the heart always manifests what's going on. Somebody that has depression in their heart, you know what? They manifest it on their face. We're called to be expressive beings. God's very expressive. James 2, 14 through uh, 18. You know, obviously, this topic we're talking about where people are like, well, that's just not how I see it, Dan. I, you know, you do your thing. I'll do it my way. I kind of have a, a special thing going on with the Lord. You know, he doesn't really require me to do all this that you're, at, you're talking about. I serve a God of, it's like, well, that's not how, you know, it, um, that's not how me and the Lord operate. It's like, this is, this is how the Lord operates. There should be a manifestation in your life that God is real. There should be a commitment that you are committed to see the advancement of the kingdom. Because why? I love God. That's his game plan. He wants us to partner with his heart. Amen? We get a, the opportunity to partner with the king. This is, I don't know how this, I didn't hear this message when I was growing up. I feel like I got robbed in my youth because I could have really ran with it in my youth with this. I was looking for this message. Every, the, what are you searching for the most in your, in your youth? Identity. Uh, go to church. Check. Going to church. Throw away your bad CDs. Check. Did it. That's it. And I was like, this is it? I feel something more inside. Because God placed that. For this generation, he's, he, there is more inside. And I encourage you to release your creativity and grab a hold of your inheritance to advance the kingdom of God and your sphere of influence, to fight desperately for it. Because the thing is, we have a nature that's lazy. It wants to justify any time it can get away just to have some me time. It's his time, amen? He says, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. I'm not trying to earn God's love. You know, Courtney, she wanted a, this is years ago. She's like, Danny, I want some flower beds. I just really, I'm like, no, you don't. I was a landscaper for like 15 years. It's like, you do not want flower beds. I work in flower beds all the time. And I'm like, I know what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna be working these flower beds. It's like, Courtney, she's amazing at everything, except for growing stuff. Now if I want them, I say, all right, babe, you want them? You're gonna get them. I made these mugs huge. No one, these are my flower beds. But I didn't do it, I did it because I love her. And that's what, the thing is, why we do what we do for the Lord, it's because we love him. There should be a works in your life. There should be, yes, I can see I'm tracking. I saw this person get set free. I got to pray this person through the Holy Ghost. I, I, had a, I got an awesome testimony from Walmart. This should be our story throughout the year. Not just onesie twosies, weekly. There should be a weekly cry that you, you put that Nehemiah heart inside me, Lord, that I, want to, I don't want to see people with any uh, no reproach. I don't want to see one person left that didn't get gathered. Not on my watch. Thrust me forth as a laborer. I believe we have a lot to grow in the church and how we express the love of Jesus. We're still trying to figure that out because we're in such an identity crisis. We've been leading prayer in church for a long time. And I tell you, it's, it's, it's one of those wild things, how hard it is to get people that love God to pray on a microphone so we can agree. That's all I want. You ain't got to preach to me. Ambo does a little pray preach, but I'm not asking you to pray preach. I'm just asking you to come up here so I can say, amen, I hear your heart. I'm with you. Because the Lord desires this house to be called a house of prayer. Amen. Not a, a den of takers. 
We're not here to take, we're here to serve one another. But I want us to, we're on a journey here. Things are gonna change. God's gonna awaken creativity and there's gonna be different, different expressions of ministry in this place. And just as we got a little taste of what, just a smidge of creativity at last minute, what an impact it made for our children, just on that little hayride. The easiest place to serve is in the church. It's the most recognized. You know what, this, how this church looks clean? Somebody cleaned it. Who was it, Brian? Brian, look, you, got recognized, you just got recognized. It's the easiest place to get recognized. Oh, we, the guy just didn't say serve in the church. But if you can't serve here, this, this is the easiest it gets. You got all them cute kids to serve. They're so funny. Serving in the church should be a natural expression. It's called love. Love, it comes naturally. You know, the famous saying that I've heard many times, it's like, you can't, uh, you can't make somebody a disciple that doesn't want to be a disciple, but you can't stop somebody from being discipled. Somebody that wants to be a disciple, they're going to they're gonna get disciples. One, one that wants to be an expression and a server and a love, you don't, it's not like they're like, oh, nobody's picked me to like serve on anything, you know, I'm just, just waiting on God. Somebody that's serving, they make room like, oh, what's going on over? What you need me to do? It's like, it just comes natural to them to make room, to, love makes that expression. It makes it available. It's so important for you to get vision in this house. You know, getting up here, doing the worship thing, the worship team loves doing that. It's like what God put inside them to do that. Now, setting up all the practices to get certain things, that kind of is a little, yeah, it's not as easy. But when you have people out here and you got people worshiping, it's like our heart to serve. Last night, when, or Friday night, when we had it all, go, it was all looking beautiful and all that. It's like, man, this wasn't inconvenient at all. This is worth it. Me up here sharing, I love doing this. Now, the waking up earlys and stay, studying and praying and stuff, there, you know, there is that, it's like, there's a thousand other things that, I hated school. I mean, that was when, now I, now the Lord called me to study and read the word and stuff. It's like, ah, the thing I feared most came upon me. But it's, you know, that's the toughest part. But you know what? We beat ourselves into submission, lay down our life for the will of God and find that delight to serve. And anytime you just make that pause, you're like, no, this is what I'm doing. The next thing you know, it just comes easy. Amen. I sure love you guys. I just want us to make sure that uh, we're going to just, uh, Rachel can kind of come up here. and I just want us to say yes. You know, if the Lord's stirring things up, I'm here to double this. I buried it. You know, some of the people in this room are some of the most uh, gifted that I know. It's like, man, you got so many gifts and talents. Invest wisely with them. You got to make room for this. Everything that seems so important, more than likely, is a lie. There's only one thing important, giving honor where honor's due. Every drama situation, don't look at the drama. Look at Christ, uh, the Lord's response to the drama. Amen? That's how, you, that's how you don't get thrown off track. It's like, all right, Lord, what's, the, what's my response? What's your response to the situation? Well, I love them. Forgive them. Help them. Amen? Let's just stand for a moment, if you will. Just... Lord, we're here to respond to you today. I'm asking, Lord, that you'd grant us a heart of vision to dream your dream once again, to advance your kingdom in every area of our life that we can, because we love you. I pray the, the, the love that's gone cold in different areas for these, we've heard this speech once before, but and it didn't do nothing with it, God. Lord, Lord, we're here to re-sign up again. I'm here to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength all the days of my life. To love my neighbor as myself, Lord. 
to go out of my way to serve and help. Lord, restore us the, the normal Christian life of abandonment towards you, taking up our cross daily and delighting to do your will. Imagine you got the birthday candle that just got given to you. I 
as we always desperately defend the candle as the song is going, hold on to what God gave you today.